Um, when Jake was born, we did find out at the hospital that he had failed his newborn hearing screening. So we asked for multiple tests to be done and found that he did have a hearing loss. So once we did bring him home, then we made an appointment with Children's Hospital and they did a, an ABR to find out that he did have a profound hearing loss in both ears. So from that point on, we started exploring some different options um, that were available to the family in Pittsburgh area and came across to Paul and did a couple visits and became part of the parent baby group and started to learn about the program that way. Um, once then we realized that DePaul was a good fit for us, we ended up enrolling Jake at 15 months and here he is now four years old and ready to leave the program and enroll in a regular uh, preschool in our town. Well, and like I said, um, at the hospital, we were given some options as to different programs that are available. Um, there's different beliefs as to how to progress with a child. So one of the things that we had decided is that the auditory oral program was something that fit our family. And Jake is the first person in our family that has hearing loss. So we were very new to the whole situation. So um, once we explored and decided what we wanted to do and started attending DePaul's programs, we knew that this was the match for us and he has been flourishing ever since. Don't be discouraged. <laughs> uh, I think that's what you encounter the most is um, parents become very disheartened and they kind of lose faith uh, in the sense of not knowing everything is so new. Um, you, kind of, you can become very discouraged. but. I think the fact that there's other people around that have gone down that road before you, um, there's a lot of support. So uh, that's what I've found because we were asked a couple times from the hospital to talk to. We, we, we had appointments at the same time as people were newly identified as having a child that was profoundly deaf. And I mean, you could see they were just very discouraged and disheartened and just didn't know what to do. And uh, I think that's that's a big hurdle. If you can get over that and have hope and faith and know that you're going to do the best you can, irrespective of what that child has, uh, then everything will kind of fall in place with the support that's there and the other people that can guide you. Uh, that That's, I think, a big thing for parents. It's but. devastating news when you find out. So then it's how you approach it from that point. So I think we've been pretty fortunate in knowing that we've sought out different support programs and talked to other parents because although it was new to us, it's not new to a lot of other people. So we kind of yeah. came up with programs based and on what the they went. The other thing we, we try to do as a family is we treated Jake as if he had no problems at all. We treated him just like he could hear and he could do everything else. and. Uh, unfortunately, we had we would have people who had newborns that would bring them to Becky's house. She would host them at her house, and it was amazing the lack of stimulation that some of them would provide those infants. And I think that's a very key part of that. Right. And uh, so that support is is critical. But I think how you approach the fact that you're going to deal with this child, uh, I always you know I always felt that you know you just treat them like any other right. child, and uh, it's worked very well for us. In fact, sometimes I think it worked too well for Jake, you know, because he, <laughs> he's kind of gone <laughs> a little further than we expected, fortunately. Well, we basically said, too, that if you um, treat the child as normal as possible prior to implementa implementation with Jake, we were doing everything, although he could not hear us, he was seeing our lips move and he was interacting with us. So when implementation came, it was basically just connecting the words to what we've been saying all along. So there was nothing different for him or how we acted. It was just a natural progression now that he was hearing us at this point. I think that somehow or other that carries over to the child. I really believe that. And that that child knows that they're not being treated differently, even they they know themselves intuitively that they are different. Uh, it, it creates a better adjustment for them, I I believe, and uh, I think they do well. And I think I think it's kind of therapeutic for the parent too, because you can talk to that child or treat that child, and you're going to love that child no matter what. Um, so the more natural you are in that interaction, the better off it is for you and, and the child. And, uh, right. 
and again, going back to what I said earlier, sometimes parents get discouraged and they don't do that. And I think that's a negative impact on that child long term. Well, I feel it has been an extremely positive experience. He has developed so much further than I ever expected in the amount of time that he's been here. It's been a good three full years that he's been implanted and in the program and the strides that he has made have just been amazing to us and to other people as well. He um, is talking so much, way more than I ever thought he would ever do. Um, being able to be exited from the program at this stage is not something that I had ever planned on either. You know, we were thinking that maybe kindergarten, but here we are going into preschool. You know, um, the confidence level that he has gained, the comfort level that he has gained knowing that although he has hearing aids, he's just like everyone else too. Um, he just seems very confident, very comfortable. Uh, I, I've been very fortunate because when Jake first started here, he'd only been implanted for about six months, so he had very little, if any, speech. And at that time, in the in the uh, in, in the toddler program, I went in the class with him, and so I actually interacted with the teachers and the other students and that whole process and. Uh, to go back to that now to see where he's at, the communication skills that he has, the socialization that has taken place, his interaction with peers at all levels. Some of them are as fluent in his, their speech as he is, some are not, and he has been able to kind of put all that together and he has just matured into this little unit that uh, in such a short period of time I, I, I'm like Becky, I would have never believed that his speech and language development would have been as far along as it currently is. And I attribute that to all the teachers and uh, you know, the, the environment here, which is conducive to that type of uh, individualization. And I think that's, that's a strength of the program. I think that they meet the kids at the individual Faces that they have, I mean, the skills that they have, and they work with them and bring them to their full potential. And uh, clearly, Jake, Jake's a good example of that. Have we touched you or is moving? We have two. Each of us has experienced something that's been kind of funny for each of us. Mine's a little more emotional because as his mom, you know, you think of all the things that they may miss out on because of their hearing loss. So on the sentimental side of mine, um, you know, I, one of the things I thought he would never be able to do is to sing a song, you know, that he would never hear those things. <laughs> and he sings all the time. Hey, diddle, diddle. <laughs> and I say that's because of his experiences here. I probably, as much as I preach that, I wouldn't treat him differently. I maybe thought of singing to him a little differently or playing music that I would have played for my older son who's fully hearing. And um, he sings all the time. He sings the songs that are taught to him here. He sings songs on the radio. Um, so for me... And he it, wants to teach you that. And he wants to yeah, change the, the words. Thing, you know, he he's not only... <laughs> he, he, he's, <laughs> he's so funny. and language. <laughs> It's something that I never thought I would hear. And DePaul gave me that hope back. So it was something that, you know, listening to him sing Hey Diddle Diddle or yeah. the Good Morning Song or, you know, all of those things were just so enlightening and so positive in my perspective that um, it's really made a difference. So just when I thought that I was doing everything right, there was something else that maybe opened my eyes that, hey, you know, you can do something different. And so for me, the singing was fun, and now that's all we ever do, you know, and it's just perfect with us. And but the, his... he does interject <laughs> some words that are very flowery <laughs> for a little fellow that you have to wonder where he picks up these. Or of course, I get accused of teaching him teaching those him things. <laughs> words, but he does it quite well on his own. He's funny. But on your end, you've had kind of a funnier experience. Well, too. <laughs> it's not a funny experience, but it was kind of an emotional experience for me. Whenever I was in, whenever Jake first started in the toddler program, we would have our break, and during our break, we would have juice and crackers and little fishies. Now, again, this was Jake had only been hearing for a couple months, and he 
didn't speak, obviously, but, you know, he knew what was going on. He was pretty interactive. And the teacher at that time would give the children a cup, and then they had an option to ask for fish or for crackers. And she would hold the cup up, and she'd say, do you want a cup? Say, cup. Of course, he couldn't say that. I wasn't quite sure he even heard the word cup. Well, she wouldn't give him the cup until he would say cup. Well, he didn't say cup. He didn't say cup for a day, two days, a week, three weeks. My frustration level was to the point where I just wanted to grab the cup off the teacher and say, give him the cup. But one day we go in there and she says, cup, and he says, cup. I almost fell off my chair. Um, and then shortly after that, it was fish and then it was cracker. And all of this had been inside of him, unable to come out until developmentally he was ready to articulate that sound and was able to internalize what he was hearing and then give it back. And I was just, I was just floored. I never would have imagined that that could have happened. And again, it was the technique that I didn't think was quite as appropriate as it should have been, but it boy surpassed anything else that could have been done. And from that point on, it was just little letters, little words, putting all those things together until his speech developed to where it is now. And, but it was kind of a rough beginning. But for me, that was very emotional, and I'll never forget that. To be there when he said his first word was really <laughs> spectacular for me. So oh, I think the sky's the limit for him because he he's very unique. He's I have five grandkids, and I see him heads and shoulders above the other ones. And they, go, they range from 13 to he's the youngest. But... Uh, He's very animated. He's very animated. He is very good with language skills. He can con you into anything. He can interject terms and words that would sometimes make a sailor blush. Um, you make him sound terrible. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying that in a positive Well, he's sense. good at manipulating words yeah. to benefit himself. But and what I'm he's saying is he has that self-confidence. Right. Okay, he's not, because you would think he would have a handicap that he wouldn't be as forward. And I'm trying right. to get across. But he's very comfortable. He's very comfortable and very forward. Right. But that right. he's thinking in and approaching people, and he is able to do that because of the skills that he has. Right. And I think those skills were developed here. And I think the interaction with staff here has helped him to develop those kind of skills. So I think he's going to go pretty far. As Becky said, He's a lot further now than we ever imagined him to mm -hmm. have been to begin with. Maybe a year or two, he could have been where he was now, but he's there. <coughs> so, you know, and from my perspective, I just think that he can do whatever he puts his mind to do. Right. You know, he's just, he's just that kind of kid. Plus, he has a personality. He feels that his job is to entertain everybody. If you get to know him a little bit, he will, he will entertain you and, uh, he has that nice personality. It's a good mix. So, uh, I think and he developed well. a good foundation here as yeah, well. Sure. You know, it's very social here, but it's also very academic. So he had the best of both worlds at a very early age. You know, at 15 months to be starting, you know, most children are still at home. So the foundation that he gained and the comfort level that he has has, I think, helped develop that personality, you know, and that comfort level. So I agree. I think he can do anything that he wants to do. Well, in my personal opinion, too, being his mom from day one, the moment I walked in here, I felt welcome. Um, it was as though everybody knew us, and I had not known anybody. And we have participated in everything that we could possibly participate in. Um, I love the interaction that happens both professionally here as well as socially. There's so many activities there that are available um, so that I can talk to other parents on a social piece as well as really trying to get down to some important concepts like transition or what's the next thing that I need to do. And I think DePaul has provided me as a mom so many options and so many different um, developmental milestones that have happened. DePaul has been there with me the whole time from that first day of our baby parent program all the way till now in transitioning out of DePaul. 
it has been amazing to me. I have never questioned anything. Um, when I do have any concerns, I have always been answered and immediately. So it has been wonderful. Um, the communication that I have with all of his teachers has been wonderful. Um, the extra things like message to me or just bonuses that go along the way. So as a parent, I do believe that I have received above and beyond the support that maybe I would get at a typical preschool or toddler program or any of those areas, which has made me much more comfortable too. And then when I'm relaxed, Jake is much more relaxed and it just kind of helps the whole process. So the support I know. And then also as a grandparent, you know, my father is here so much and he's been embraced here just as well. So it doesn't matter it's if you're the parent. <laughs> right. I mean, you could be the parent, the yeah. grandparent, everybody. Yeah. It's the whole family is welcome. You know, even Jake's older brother has been welcomed into everything that's been done here. So it's not just a parent support. I think it's a family support. And I'm grateful. And I know that I have never made the wrong decision in coming here. I, I agree. I, and I really see the Paul as a educational center where children's needs are met at their whatever basis they started at but more importantly along that journey the parents come along with the child so it's not like a traditional school where the kid goes to school and there's the the school life for the child and then the home life for the child but it's all melted together and i think that's what becky's alluding to and I think that's critical. So you grow with your child. And I'm here every day just about. And uh, just that's the things that I hear that are very positive. I see what teachers do. I see programs. I go to workshops and that. And, you know, there isn't a want for anything for a child to grow and to develop to their potential. Uh, all those things are met here, both educationally and socially. That's the other component is that the children's interactions with one another uh, these kids treat one another with respect. They, uh, they get along well. The teachers make sure that students get along well. And it's amazing. I do recess with the kids one day a week, and I see all these kids. They're like one big happy family. You know, they're like siblings rather than students in a school where they uh, kind of interact, and that's the extent of it. So I think that's, a, I think that's a, an attribute of DePaul that you will not find elsewhere. Um, you know, the staff, the administration, everybody is just, uh, you know, they're all child oriented and uh, that's what it's about. That's what makes it successful. Mm -hmm. um, initially, we had found out that Jake was profoundly deaf at the hospital. Um, then visiting DePaul at a very early age, I believe he was maybe only a couple of months old at that time when we started coming to the baby parent program. Um, progressed through that and moved actually to the toddler program after Jake was implanted at one year old. Um, participating in the toddler program was very good for him developmentally too, as well as us working through the program. Um, then moved to preschool and attended the preschool program and now is four years old and is transitioning out of DePaul to our typical preschool, um, where then he will be ready to go to our typical kindergarten. So moving through all of the stages has been great. Well, and he, he has done such a great job going through that program. And he also attended the summer program here, which is a very positive uh, part of the, of the program because it gives him an opportunity uh, not to lose any ground from the time they leave in the spring to the time they come back mm -hmm. in the fall. So that's 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 a good transition there. And uh, we're just so happy that Jake has been able to move along as well as he has and uh, really kind of exit to a, a traditional preschool way ahead of schedule. And uh, again, developmentally, as Becky said, having gone through those steps has just been you know, and it's very been positive. pretty quick really yeah, i mean very, when you think quick. about the whole thing you know from birth then right away to you know the baby group and then the toddler program and then preschool and now in the time from his implantation to now has only been three years so we're moving pretty quickly faster than we ever thought well, I know. And, <laughs> and again i'd just like to say the fact that the teachers here have taken jake and they've worked with him 
at his level. So they've really pushed him to be able to meet the goals that they had set up for him. And, mm -hmm. you know, when we sit in IEPs, all the goals that they set for him a lot of times are met way before the annual review. And so they keep working with him, make adjustments, change. And so all of that has transitioned him into a kind of an early bloomer, so to speak. <laughs> but again, it couldn't have been possible without support here.